Hey guys, welcome back to the Eaton Homestead. I'm so glad to have you here. We are up here in Maine in zone 5B and it's December. So there's not a whole lot that we can be doing in the garden besides buying seeds and planning for next year and just dreaming about our garden. So that is what I'm doing. I do already have like two shoe boxes full of seeds. I'm a bit of a seed hoarder. So I probably don't need more seeds, although don't let anybody tell you that. Don't let anybody tell you that you do not need more seeds. You do not need that kind of negativity in your life. So I went ahead and I ordered some seeds because I had some things that I had run out of and that I um, wanted to try. So I'm really excited to open up this package with you today. Before I get into that, I just wanted to share a few of the companies that, hey Wyatt, do you want to come help me? Yeah. Well, come here. No. Come here. No. Oh, you don't want to be on the camera? Okay, I'll be on camera. Okay. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to share a few of the companies that I have purchased seeds from before in the past. Um, one of those is Johnny's. Johnny's is actually local here to Maine. My sister-in-law works for the company. They're an employee-owned company. Um, they're just pretty cool. I'm happy to support them. They are not um, all heirlooms, so I know a lot of the other seed companies that I pur purchase from tend to be all heirloom. Johnny's is more um, geared towards like commercial growers or market growers, people who grow and sell their produce, which is not me. <laughs> I grow for our family and to share with family and friends, but I'm not selling any of my product. Um, it's just for our own consumption. But Johnny's is still a really great company. They have this amazing catalog that my sister-in-law helps to put together. She's a photographer for the company. And it's just so jam-packed with information. There's a little key down at the bottom that tells you different things about the different seeds, whether or not they're organic or you know how they perform in greenhouses or how they stand up to cold all kinds of cool stuff there's this germination guide for everything so you can get a sense of how big the seeds are and at what temperatures they germinate best so it's just it's a really good um catalog they have tons and tons of variety flowers as well and they also um sell seed starting and different uh tools for gardening so Really awesome. I've gotten a lot of seeds from Johnny's over the years. Again, because my sister-in-law works there, so she hooks me up a lot of the time. And I've purchased from them before, and um, I've just always had really, really good success with their seeds. <laughs> the second company is one that I think we all know and love, and that's Baker Creek Seed Company. This is all heirloom. And I actually had the opportunity to go and visit Baker Creek last summer. I think it was last summer we were on vacation in Branson, Missouri and Baker Creek was not too far from there so we ended up um, getting to go and spend a day there and it's just it's beautiful their products their offerings are just so wild sometimes like it's just the coolest things the selection at Baker Creek is really pretty incredible they have just such rare unique uh, varieties of things and that's what I find really fun about this particular company is that I get to grow things that I've never seen before and that you just won't find at the grocery store. I feel like if I am growing a garden and I'm growing all of the things that I just walk into the grocery store and see on the shelves, it makes it a lot harder to overcome those challenges and to want to push through them and find solutions uh, because you could just, it's just so much easier to just go to the grocery store and buy it there. So why would you do all that? We know all the whys, but um, one of the really fun things about this is that you're growing something that you're not going to find at the grocery store. So I have a ton of seeds from Baker Creek. This is one that I shop from quite frequently. I also really love MI Gardener. Um, I've also purchased lots and lots of seeds from this company. Uh, they're really inexpensive, so that's one of the reasons that I tend to bought a lot, is that um, I, it's just more affordable and you can get so many more varieties of things and, you know, especially when it comes to flowers and stuff, it's just fun to have lots of variety in your garden. Um, so this is another company that I've had really, really good success with, just always love their seeds. 
And then a couple more that I've used, you know, a little bit less frequently. Um, one of them is Botanical Interests. Um, their packaging is gorgeous. And this is one that I have tended to get at our local nursery that I really love. Um, but their packaging is also really um, informational. So that's nice to have lots of information about growing. Um, even on the inside, I believe. Yeah, on the inside of the package, there's even more. Which is funny to me because like I'm never going to open this. I guess I could put the seeds in something else and then rip this open to read it. But I wouldn't because the package is too pretty. And the other one is uh, Seeds of Change. I think that I've seen these at... Um, tractor supply so this is where I tend to just grab those when I'm standing in line and shouldn't be adding seeds to my order but I do also really great success with these ones but today I am opening up my package from seeds now which is a company that I have never purchased from before uh, but I heard about them and they're they have some seeds that are anywhere from like 99 cents to $1.99 so I was really excited by that and yeah let's rip her open I'm super pumped this is my getting to live in my garden glory moments when it's freezing cold outside and I have a hard time even keeping my herbs alive on the window because it's just so dang dark all the time I also really love putting the Eaton Homestead on my uh, return address because it makes me feel legit. Let's rip her open, see what these babies look like. Again, I've never purchased from this company before, so I can't say anything about their germination, but <laughs> that's a lot of seeds. I hope my husband's not watching this. Oh my gosh, and there's more in there. Wow. All right, so these are like a smaller package of seeds, although that's still like a ton, a ton of little seeds in there. So let's see, what did I do? I got some kohlrabi, so I did the purple Vienna. I do really like this label that they do. It has the picture that's helpful for me um, to remember what it is that I'm looking at. Approximately 50 seeds, so that's a lot of seeds. Um, but yeah, so I did the purple Vienna kohlrabi and the white Vienna kohlrabi. Give those a try next year. I've got some lemon balm. Somebody gave me a lemon balm plant this year, but I'd really like to try and get some more going. Uh, Burgundy Boston lettuce. I have got a lot of things. So this is the Big Max pumpkin, and I only got like five seeds. So that would be, I mean, you're getting what you pay for. But that's cool, because I, this year, actually grew a lot of pumpkins, but I just went and grew, like grabbed a handful of seeds from my best friend's greenhouse and did really well, and I saved a bunch of them, but Big Max was one that I did not have. These are the Japanese Minoways radish. I needed a lot of radishes because I've just gone through those pretty quickly. Rutabagas. So this is the purple top rutabaga. Uh, winter giant spinach. Something else that we use a lot of. Great for juicing and salads. Uh, scallop golden bush squash. I've never grown anything like these before, so I'm excited to give those a try. Red cayenne pepper. I have a really hard time with peppers and I'm determined to make 2021 the year that I do better with peppers. This is the lard, large red cherry pepper. It's a sweet pepper. That looks fun. Summer bib lettuce. Lemon mint. Again, I got a lot of mints because I really like mint. Peppermint, mint. <laughs> Spearmint, mint. I grew some nasturtiums this year and it was weird because the year before, I didn't grow any, but my best friend grew some in her garden and they were like explosive, they were huge. Mine never really took off. I mean, they did okay and they like put off a few flowers, but they weren't like crazy. 
I think that they did better in the places where I gave them more sun. I have a couple of planters out front of my house and my house is the front of the house is only like half of the day um, with good sunshine. So I only have that one variety. So I wanted to try a few more varieties. I got the peach Melba nasturtium and the whirly bird nasturtium, probably just because that name is super fun. Uh, a purple top turnip. Love my turnips. Uh, dill, also super obsessed with dill in the summertime. Dill and cucumber sandwiches are my jam. The cucumelon, oh, thank goodness. Cucumelon cucumber or the Mexican sour gherkin. I had grown these the year before last and really, really liked them, but uh, I couldn't find them anywhere this year with 2020 just being as crazy as it was and um, so many people getting into gardening, seed companies were just wiped out in the spring and cucumelons was something that I could not find anywhere. This only has like six seeds in it. <laughs> so hopefully I can get some of these going and hopefully save some seeds from it this year. I got the white Armenian cucumber because I thought that looked really cool. I got, ooh, free seed starter kit, wildflower coneflower scatter garden. That's fun. So that was like a free seed package that they put in there. This is the Hubbard green squash, which I've never grown before. So I wanted to try those out. Oh my gosh, I got so many. I didn't realize, I mean, I did, but it's a lot of varieties. Delicata squash. I grew one delicata uh, plant this year from a start that one of my friends gave me and got like a couple squash off of it. So I wanted to try and grow some more this year. These are the YOLO wonder peppers. Again, I just, I like have run out of most of my pepper seeds. Orange King pepper. And I need to figure out how to make next year the year of the pepper and being more successful with them. I don't know if it's a heat problem issue. I don't know. I don't know if I get them out there too early or something. In Maine, it's cold <laughs> and our season is very short. So I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna figure it out though. This is the Matador Viking spinach. Again, variety is the spice of life. I've got round and Denise, Denise zucchini. So it's like a round zucchini. I thought that looked fun. This is Delicates Blue Kohlrabi. So another kohlrabi. I guess I was really feeling the kohlrabi. Uh, dark Opal Basil, which I've grown this before from other companies, but just really, really love it and I wanted to grow more this year. Some Thai Basil. I've got Calabrese. Calabrese broccoli and a early purple broccoli. I'm hoping, I've never done a fall garden. I've always just sort of like focused on the spring and the summer. And next year, my plan is to be a little bit more organized and be able to have some starts going so that I can move stuff out into the garden for the fall season. And I'm hoping that things like broccoli will do better for me in the fall in Maine when it starts to cool off. Um, I've always tried to grow them, I think, during the heat of the summer, and they do not appreciate the heat like that. So they just bolt right away um, or are just very slow growing. And I think that they would be happier in the cooler fall garden. Um, so I'm going to try and figure out my scheduling for all of that. I need like a calendar, and this is literally what I do. I have a calendar, and I write down when I need to start seeds and when they're gonna go out into the garden so that I'm not starting things too early or too late, uh, which I have done a lot of in the past. And then you have these like gigantic tomato plants that are fine. You can still plant them out like that, but it's harder, harder to plant them out when they're like four feet tall. Um, but I'm hoping that if I can get it on the calendar to get some seeds started, then I can have some nice healthy starts to move out um, for the fall garden. I got the homestead tomato. I have a lot of tomatoes. I have a lot of tomatoes. I have a lot of tomato seeds, but 
I realized this year when I really jumped into canning for the first time that I grew a lot of like weird varieties, which is fine, it's fun, but it's not as great for canning purposes. So what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to use my beds. I have 15 raised beds and some of them already have trellises on them. So I'm going to use that trellis space to grow a smaller number of, you know, just the kind of fun, funky varieties. And then the in-ground space, which did amazing this year, and I had three long rows of tomatoes, and I don't know, like another 50 plants there maybe. Um, those were all different varieties and stuff in there, and it just made it a little bit harder. Like they grew kind of funny together because certain ones grow differently than others, and you know, some got really, really big and kind of crowded the other ones out. And I grew a pear variety, like a, you know, it's like a cherry, but like a pear shape. And that was so prolific. I could not, I'm going to be finding those tomatoes everywhere because I could not keep up with picking them. Yeah. They just ended up all over the ground and everywhere is a huge mess. So my focus this year is going to be planting more of, um, a more specific tomato to, for processing, for making sauces uh, so that I get more of like a standard harvest, a standard batch, and hopefully it will make processing a little bit easier rather than having all these different shapes and colors, which it doesn't really bother me. Um, I think that it would be a little bit prettier if I hadn't like mixed so many different colored tomatoes together. My tomato paste is kind of brown. Uh, so I think that having more standard colors and shapes would just make the whole thing easier and make the end product a lot better. So this is the Homestead tomato and this is one of those that I'm hoping to grow a few more of because it's a pretty standard kind of tomato. This is a cherry, a large cherry tomato, so that'll be in one of the in-ground wow. beds, but just fun. My daughter really loves cherry tomatoes, so she goes out there and cleans out the plants before I can even bring them in. Uh, this is iceberg lettuce. thought I'd try something a little more headed. This is romaine classic lettuce, so another kind of head lettuce. This is salad bowl lettuce. This is one that I would um, sow more thickly and just kind of cut and just cut and come again. This is the Anaheim pepper. A California wonder pepper. This is the Walla Walla sweet onion. So I had like a weird little onion harvest this year and this is another one that I need to um, do a little research on and try to get a good onion harvest because we go through a lot of onions even though nobody in my family really likes them if I cut them up small enough they they don't notice it and I think it tastes makes everything taste a lot better so the Walla Walla sweet onion and the white sweet Spanish onion a couple of those blue lake bush bean so this is another thing that I am focusing on growing more of because I tend to just grow like a few little bush beans here and there. And then you're bringing in like a handful of beans and what do you do with that? So I want to be more intentional. My family loves canned green beans. I actually like green beans canned better than like eating them fresh or cooking them fresh, I guess. I don't know. I like when they're soft and mushy. So I want to grow a whole bunch more bush beans this year so that I can be harvesting larger amounts of them at once to be putting up in cans. So that's one of my focuses. Uh, grano is a red onion, so another onion variety, and I have a whole pile here on the floor. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. I have got the Casper eggplant, so it's like a white eggplant. This is leaf lettuce basil. This is something I've never done before, but I have seen it on different vlogs and stuff and I think it looks really cool. So I'm excited to give that a try. I think that having like a large leaf basil would be cool for processing up pesto and not having to like wait to harvest so much, you know, just kind of getting a big batch all at once. This is lime basil. I've never tried lime basil before, so. I, this was my year of basil. I grew so much basil, which was great for making sauce and pesto and just eating it all the time. I dried a ton of it. Um, 
So I'm pumped to do that again next year. I just like started so many herb seed seedlings so that I would have tons of starts to put out there. I just, the year before I had like one or two basil plants and they were like, meh. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to be a little heavy handed on the herbs. This is Genovese basil, which is just like your standard basil. This is slow bolt, slow bolt cilantro. So cilantro is notorious for just bolting on you super fast. So that's a lot of seeds. Holy moly. Um, and I also really, really love cilantro. Love making, like, I don't make like real guacamole, but just like mashing up avocado and some tomatoes and cilantro and eating that basically out of the bowl. This is the Golden Globe turnip. So more turnips. We've got the Snowball cauliflower. Hopefully get something off that. I love cauliflower. Long Island Brussels sprouts. Oh, another one. My Brussels sprouts did so good this year and they really thought they looked like they were going to put off some um, Brussels sprouts for me, but I had such a hard time with aphids. I've seen them a little bit here and there in the garden before, but this was the year, first year that I was just like, overwhelmed by them just completely overrun so I need to get my game plan together for next year to be better prepared to battle them as soon as I see them and not let those colonies get so out of control because I think that that just I mean the plants didn't die but they just were so stunted after that and I, I never could get rid of them I sprayed and sprayed and I was using neem oil and it just they just kept coming back it was awful they're really gross so we'll try that again, try to have better pest control. I got some German chamomile because I love chamomile. I grew one plant this year and I want to be able to start more plants and they're so expensive. Chamomile is so expensive. So I was hoping maybe that trying starting them from seed that I might be a little bit more successful with that. <clears throat> I was also really low on carrots. So I have the Autumn King carrot and this is the Black Beauty eggplant. Love eggplant. This is the Pandora striped eggplant. That just looks really fun, like a little globe. These are Dan Danvers carrots, kind of a pretty standard one. Carrots is another one that I want to dedicate more space to so that I can just grow a ton of them to put up in cans because we, our family really likes canned carrots. Uh, this is the Roma tomato. So again, just a good paste tomato for processing. This is blue curled scotch kale. Love my kale. I've got some spaghetti squash. I've actually never grown spaghetti squash before. I was drowning in zucchini this year um, and I got a ton of winter squash too. Um, but I really like spaghetti squash and cooking it up and eating it like spaghetti with sauce on it. Um, my family, less so, but I'll eat it. And this is summer savory, so an herb that I just wanted to give that a try. So yeah, this is a pretty ridiculous <laughs> seed haul, but it just, I get to sit here and dream and now it makes me excited to go sit down with my notebook and make some plans and figure out where I'm gonna put things and when things need to be started and when they get to be transplanted out into the garden. And yeah, help me get through these very cold winter months that are really just starting and are gonna feel like an eternity, which they kind of are because in Maine, we might start to warm up by April, like warm up be like not bitterly cold, but we won't be planting stuff out until maybe in May, most likely June. Uh, so it's a long time to wait, <laughs> but I'll make it. I'm just gonna sit here with my hot tea or hot cocoa and look at seed catalogs and watch YouTube videos and dream, dream, dream for the garden to come back again next year. And you know, every year it gets a little bit easier, you get a little bit better and it's just always fun. 
So thanks for hanging out with me and going through all these seeds. I am super pumped about my seed haul. I am going to start taking these and <laughs> it's raining seeds and organizing them into my fun little boxes here. I've got this pile and this all needs to go in here and take a better assessment of what I've got. Uh, and if I need anything else, I don't think I do. Need is an operative word, you know. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. You can even hit that bell so you'll be notified whenever I post something new. Uh, it really helps us to grow our channel, which is our goal for 2021. So would really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.